WSSU Ram Nation, I'm not going to mince words. What happened Saturday in Richmond at Historic Hovey Field, that was a Ram shame. No doubt about it. And we're going to talk about that game, ugly as it was. We're going to talk about it. And we're also going to talk about why everything that WSSU wants is still right in front of us. And some of these issues that they're facing can be fixable. And we're going to tell you exactly why right on the other end of this intro. What's up, WSSU Ram Nation? This is SJG, and I appreciate you guys for rocking with me. Please go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button as we're looking to get to 500 subscribers by my birthday, which is November 2nd. I really appreciate you guys so much for that. And then also share this too with some Rams or some other CIAA fans or just anybody else in your network that you think that would enjoy this. I appreciate that. <sighs> yeah, this game Saturday. Mm. Shout out to the uh, coffee mug. It's pretty nice. Make sure you guys go to the uh, YouTube page. I'm sorry, the link in the description and uh, go to the Amazon page and buy some merch, support WSSU, support the channel. Um, yeah. So first off, I want to shout out to a couple of people. I want to shout out to the Richmond Alumni Association. They definitely did their thing when it came to uh, providing uh, some things for the student athletes as well as it looks like the tailgate was a success as well. Um, really setting a bar really hi so shout out to them also shout out to the folks who rode up from winston on the bus uh and dr anita miles and everybody else that was involved with that um really excited to see that we love to travel and support our rams uh and that support is amazing and i think it goes a long way <sighs> now to the game y'all to the game so coming into this game four and one wssu feeling pretty good about itself right Everybody's feeling pretty good. You know, we just were up in the 804 a couple uh, weeks back, picked up the win over Virginia State, got the win over Bowie State, and people feeling like, okay, you know what? We can go. We just saw this Union team lose to Johnson C. Smith, so let's go. Let's strap it up. So we get to the first drive. And before we get to the first drive, we'll talk about on Tuesday, that is when WSSU has its press conference. And living here in Winston, I do go to the press conferences. And uh, so, you know, Coach Massey talked on Tuesday about Jay Tobias. Jay, Jay Tobias is number three, the running back there. Um, he's had a really great career. And he talked about how he was their key guy. And if you shut him down, then you got to force the other guys to beat you in. How they really wanted to shut down the run and forced him to open up the pass. Well, Virginia Union, <laughs> they did an MJ. They took that thing personally. And so they came out on their first drive. They got the ball first, started off at their uh, own 25, and proceeded to go 75 yards down the field, 13 plays, including multiple third down conversions, and also a personal foul, um, which would be a theme of the game. Those two things, keep those in mind. But anyway, they were able to go up and score 7-0. So we get the ball. We had a 45-yard pass from Daylon Lee, and we're feeling like, okay, good. We're in business. He had a good game last week. We're really expecting that to continue over here at Richmond. And so they're moving the ball along, but then the fumble comes. So Virginia Union is a veteran team. They have played in the playoffs the last two years, been in the CIAA championship last year, and won it. So they know when an opportunity comes their way, they know how to pounce on it, and that's exactly what they did. They pounced on the ball. Then they were able to score uh, using the run and the pass and go up 14-0 to on us. And now at this point, at the beginning of the second quarter, still early, but you're starting to get that feeling that things are not going the way that you want it to go if you're a Ram. Yeah. So WSU gets the ball. They drive down the field. They get to the one yard. They were so close. They could smell the end zone. They could smell the blades of grass. But... False start penalty brings him back, and then we get a sack. Only our third sack of the year. We came into this game with two sacks all year in five games. We got sacked three times on, on uh, Saturday, and that's really part of the story of the game and part of the story of our loss. 
our offensive line has played really great so far this season for the most part. Uh, opening up holes on the, for the running backs and also um, protecting Dalen Lee. Again, he had only been sacked twice in the first five games. That's pretty damn good. Pretty ram good, I'm sorry. And But the offensive line was a problem. They were often overmanned, undermanned, undermanned against Virginia Union, who is a bigger, stronger team. Let's just be honest. Along the lines, that's what they were, and that's where uh, the difference in this game really started. So, all right, so we got the ball. We don't get the touchdown, even though we were at the one-yard line. So we settle for a field goal. Now, this is something we'll talk about a little bit later. So we settle for the field goal. We go down, and we only give up a field goal, so we're down 17 to three with uh, just a couple minutes left in the first half and you're feeling like okay this is not great but if you weather the storm it's still manageable right you think it's still manageable but then the offense stalls for Winston and the VUU offense gets makes quick work they get a touchdown and it's 24 to 3 at halftime and at this point the game is still mathematically there you could come back teams have come back from bigger from bigger deficits that happens, right? It's not out of the ordinary. But the way the game went, it didn't feel good. It didn't seem like it was going to happen. And the second half was more of the same. Um, you know, they were uh, able to keep them to only one more touchdown. Uh, and that was even, like, crazy. That was just like, this just isn't our day. Because basically the running back fumbled close to the end zone and it fumbled forward and they scored a touchdown. Just wasn't our day. But there were a lot of things that were controllable. So the end of the score was 31-13, and it wasn't even that close, like that, to be honest. Um, we did fire some things in the passing game at certain times, but then we had to pass, and they knew we had to pass. They pinned their ears back, and they made Dale Lee uh, scramble around there, and he fumbled the ball a couple times. Um, they, they lost uh, several fumbles, and also um, the red zone issues continued. Got into the red zone multiple times and only came up with one touchdown. And, uh, you know, I would say this game exposed WSSU, right? It exposed a lot of the things that they had gotten away with in the first couple of weeks of the season. Um, you know, again, they came in 4-1. and one. Their only loss was to North Carolina a and which has twice as many scholarships, if not closer to three. And we only lost that game by seven. But somehow against Virginia Union, who was also a Division II team, who was also capped at 36 scholarships. And from what I was told last year, they don't have 36 scholarships, right? They don't have these. So there's not that scholarship advantage. But we were manhandled um, in a lot of ways. And, you know, we hear about resources all the time, but the resources aren't what lost this game. Um, you know, the inability to score in the red zone, and also penalties. We ended up getting 11 penalties. Now, they actually ended up with 12 penalties. But if you look at the timing of the penalties, our penalties were much more costly. And, yeah, it just was not It was not what you wanted. And so um, ours also came earlier in the game, and they were of the more devastating kind. So, and I bring this up because, okay, here's the thing, guys. I... Am not, I, I am not a coach, clearly. Um, I did not play football at a high level. Um, I've played a lot of video games, some good, some not great. But, um, so I don't really like to, I'm not really the guy that likes to, as a journalist, as a professional, as what I got my degree in at WSSU, I'm not really the guy that likes to come by behind and Monday morning, Monday morning quarterback, even though I'm shooting this early in the morning on a Monday, the head coaches and any of the other coaches these guys have livelihoods these guys have played this game and they get paid for this um but if we're gonna do what i want to do with this platform which is be a real honest open look at what's going on at wssu whether that's football basketball or with the university and some great things happen going on with the university by the way i definitely want to shout them out for that but we got to be real and so you know, over the things that came back to bite us in the behind on Saturday were some things that have been building all season. Earlier, after the 
God, what was it? It was after the Virginia State game. Coach Massey was asked about uh, the Rams' propensity to, in the red zone, to not come up with touchdowns. Now, Coach Massey pointed out that they had one of the higher percentages in the CIAA regarding red zone conversions. But if you took a little look closer at that stat, they were actually number four. Um, you know, that, that's respectable. But a lot of those were field goals and not touchdowns. So you're talking about three points, not six, potentially seven points. And that Ohio Dominican game that we won in overtime was great that we won that game. But there were two times where the ball was inside the five yard line. And I believe, and I know one time where it was inside the 10 and we didn't go for it. And I get it. You know, these guys, you know, this is a program that has lost a lot of games late over the last couple of years. So I understand for them why it may be, it may make sense to play this way, but there are a lot of times it feels like as an observer, they are playing to not lose the game instead of being aggressive and on offensively, they are playing to not lose the game. And, uh, you know, again, and it hadn't really been an issue in the previous games because they won. But in this game, again, when you're down 14 to zero, if you're able to punch that in and get that score, then you're down 14, seven, then it's still a game. But when you're consistently having to go for these field goals and they're scoring touchdowns at a certain point, the three points aren't going to work anymore. You got to get down there and convert in the red zone. And unfortunately, WSSU wasn't able to do that. So that's one thing. Uh, and then also at the after the Bowie State game, WSSU had 12 penalties, which is which is pretty uh, is a lot. And so I asked Coach Massey about the penalties and. You know, Coach Massey has a great sense of humor, and he talked about how much they had ran and uh, tried to, you know, make light of it. But, you know, talked about, you know, the fact that they talked about the fact that, um, you know, Bowie State um, may have done some things that uh, had kind of drew the ire of his players, and they were fired up. And I get it. Football is a game of passion. You want the young men to have passion. But we're trying, what we saw on Saturday was a program – that is what we're trying to get, and that's championship level. And, um, you know, I, I just feel like if we're going to play at a championship level, you know, those calls, we have to kind of have cooler heads prevailing. And some of the calls that we got, there were some personal fouls, there were some late hits, there were some things like that. Some of it was kind of ticky-tack, but, you know, you expect that on the road. You know, you just have to know and play smart. And, um, you know, those are things that... Um, you know, when you win, they kind of get overlooked, but when you lost, they're, when you lose, they're definitely mag magnified. So with all this said, we're four and two. And to be honest, we're playing with house money because the CIAA picked WSSU to finish six. We already knocked off the number one team and we knocked off the number five team. The two teams uh, picked to finish ahead of us, Virginia State and Bowie State. Virginia Union's picked to finish second. And uh, they should have been picked to finish first, clearly, from the beginning. And they showed that why on Saturday. Anyway, 4-2, um, and two, we still got, and more importantly, we're 1-1 one one in the CIAA. So, I'm sorry, we're 2-1 in the CIAA. So, our win against Virginia State, our win against Bowie State, and then uh, our win, uh, our, our loss on Saturday. So, we still have everything in front of us, right? We still have literally everything that we want in front of us. Um, right now, Johnson C. Smith is number one in the CIAA. They are perfect six and zero. They are three and zero in the comp. They are three and zero in the conference. Right behind them is Virginia Union, who is three and two overall, but they are two and zero in the CIAA. Yes, even though they lost to Johnson C. Smith, they are two and zero in the CIAA because that game didn't count. I'll post the HBCU game day link that explains that. But anyway. They, um, so those two teams are the front runners right now because remember, there are no di divisions. We've already um, had our shot at Virginia Union. They will go back and play the rest of their CIAA North Brethren, and I don't know that they're going to lose another game. I'm going to be honest with you. And because they didn't have that one count, um, you know, they have uh, the head to head over us, and, uh, you know, they may not lose another game. So they may sew up one spot. And then it becomes, um, who's going to get the other spot. 
We've already beaten Virginia State, so I don't know how the tiebreaker is going to work for that because it counted for us. It didn't count for them. Either way it goes, our game, uh, we still have our destiny in front of us, right? If we win these next four games, then uh, everybody in the South, well, everybody, if we win these next four games, then everybody outside of Virginia Union will have at least one loss, and that's assuming VUU doesn't lose. We'll see. We're not even going there. But if we win all our games, we get to go back. We get to go to the CIAA championship. We haven't been there since 2016, and that would be amazing. That would be great to get there and see what happens. Maybe you see Virginia Union again. But before you even get to all that, you know, and I know a lot of people are also lining up the game against Smith, and that makes sense uh, given um, – you know, where Johnson C. Smith is. And I still believe that WSSU was probably at this point the third best team in the CIAA. So those two teams are going to match up. They're going to come to us on October 26th. It's going to be a big game. HBCU Go is going to be there, nationally televised. I know everybody's excited about homecoming. And hey, you might not be some, you might be somebody who doesn't even make it out of the gravel lot for tailgate for homecoming. You need to come to that Johnson C. Smith game. You really do just for WSSU. Um, as a brand to really put ourselves out there and make ourselves attractive to students and just as the brand that we are. Anyway, that could potentially be a big game. If both teams went out, then the winner of that game probably controls their own destiny and is probably the favorite to, you know, get over to Salem on this side. Um, but, you know, we'll worry about that when we get there because we have two games before then and both of them are playing pretty well for the most part. Both of them are four and two, and that's Shaw and Livingstone. Now, you know, both of these teams have other rivals. Well, right now, I guess because St. Aug is not playing, Shaw doesn't really have another rival. But anyway, anyway, they have other rivals, right? But they both consider WSSU rivals. We know it's WSSU versus everybody. It's just the way that kind of works out. Anyway, Shaw's coming into town this week. We're usually pretty good at Bowman Gray. Um... You know, we are 2-0 at Bowman Gray right now, but this is a big week. This is a big week. Uh, those penalties and figuring out the red zone, if they can do that, then, you know, they put themselves in a good position to win this, this game. And then you got to go over to Salisbury and play on that uh, blue Smurf turf, and uh, we'll see what happens there. We're 0-1 on that turf, uh, even though we generally we have owned Livingstone in this series. So a lot to play for. Um, you know, the defense, you got to get your face back. Um, you know, it was rough last week, but you're still a really talented and good group. Play the way that you played up to this part of the season, and uh, good things will happen. Uh, but the offense, offensively, we have to be aggressive. We can't rely on the defense to, um, you know, consistently turn the ball over and put us in good field position and then hope that we can punch the ball in. Dalen Lee has shown over the last couple of games he started to look like somewhat of the guy. You know, he started to look like the guy that we thought he was going to be. Um, we've seen some receivers emerge. Nehemiah Williams caught five passes for 102 yards, 101 yards. And, um, you know, so really great day for him. Uh, there are some weapons. Uh, we saw Jachawan Stafford uh, getting busy uh, in the pass game and the run game. So there's a lot of talent on this team. I don't think that there is any team that is left on our schedule that is going to out-talent us. Um, I don't. Even Johnson C. Smith, uh, I think they're talented, but they got to come to Bowman Gray Stadium. They're not going to be on Bay's Ford Road. Um, so, you know, but before we get to that game, we got to handle business against Shaw and against Livingstone. <sighs> so that's it. That's really what I wanted to say. Um, look. It's, uh, it's, it's been a great season so far. It's, it's been a good season so far. Uh, it's been good to get back to our winning ways, um, trying to get past that four win mark for the first time under uh, head coach Robert Massey. Uh, we got a great chance to do that this week against Shaw, but we got to buckle down because they're going to come in ready to play. It is a blackout game, so if you don't have your WSSU gear, please hit the link below and make sure I link some black merch. Uh, it is going to be officially licensed, which benefits the school. And if you get it through this link, it also benefits this channel. Look, I appreciate all my Ram fam. Again, I really appreciate y'all for the love that y'all showed me uh, over the past couple of past couple of weeks and past month. 
Uh, after my father transitioned, I, I really appreciate y'all and love y'all for that. Um, y'all have been amazing. And, you know, win, lose, or draw, there's no other school that I'd rather be affiliated with or be um, have my degree from than Winston-Salem State University and be a part of Ram Nation. But um, look, guys, everything is still in front of us. Saturday was bad, but we'll go on and uh, we'll get ready. Appreciate everybody for tuning into this. I hope you guys have a great Ram day and a great Ram week.